Hey there, I'm Robbie Carmen. And I'm Rich Harrington. And welcome to the Creative Cows DSLR Essentials podcast. And today, Rich, we're going to take a look at a feature in Adobe After Effects, a new feature, in fact, that I think is um, pretty much like magic. Yeah, it, it does a lot of great things. It's the warp stabilizer, yep. and it actually can fix image stabilization. It can warp an image to selectively fix areas that are most unstable. It can even do rolling shutter compensation. Which is a huge in itself, right? Yeah. Now, this is, just to be clear, this is a new feature in After Effects CS 5.5, yes, right? Yes, the latest version. The latest version. So if you are on a older version, this feature won't be available to you, but in my opinion, it's a reason to you know check out upgrading. Yeah. And uh, also, the cool thing that Adobe, and a lot of people might not know, is that Adobe actually just recently, beset, they've always had free downloads, that you know trial versions that you can uh, use. Yeah, you can work for 30 days with this if you don't have it. Right, but they also just launched a subscription service, so you can actually essentially rent an application for, you know, if you have a project coming up and you need to use a particular feature or whatever, you can also uh, take part in the subscription service to use, you know, just uh, the application that you need or applications you need for a specific period of time, which is nice as well. Yes, yeah, so if you have a big job, you can go ahead and take advantage of that. And this is no different than some of the higher end plug-in manufacturers that have made their tools available for rent. Absolutely. So, without further ado, let's yeah. jump in here and show me how this feature works. Well, you go ahead, I'm in Premiere Pro, yep. and if I identify a shot that I want to stabilize, I could just go ahead and right click on that shot, yep. and if I just scroll down here, you'll see Replace with After Effects Composition. Now, just to be clear, I could also just import a shot directly into After Effects if I wanted to. Yeah, if you're using another tool like Final Cut Pro or Avid, you could just export out the shot you want right. and do that. I just wanted to show how easy it is here for a Premiere Pro workflow because this is actually going to create a dynamic link. Yep. So if I would need to, I could jump back in and fix that in After Effects, close and save, and it updates, updates in Premiere. Absolutely, very cool. Yeah. So it asked me to name the project, okay. so that's fine. I'll just go ahead and call this the similar name to the show I'm working on. Okay. And we'll store that. And now we have an After Effects project and a Premiere project that share content. Okay, so that shot that we had that we right clicked on in our Premiere Pro timeline automatically makes its way over here onto a composition in After Effects. Yep, and I could just choose Animation, mm -hmm. Stabilize Motion, okay. and it immediately starts to analyze the clip. So that bar across there is just saying Analyzing in Background. Okay. Now, the big thing to realize there is, first off, it does take a little bit of time. And what I recommend is that you actually take a look at the info panel here. And when you do that, you could see, you know, it says how long the shot's going to take. Yep. This particular one right now, it's thinking about seven minutes. But notice that the time is actually going down. It really starts going faster there, and it starts pushing through the frames. Okay. But I could switch back and just keep editing in my app while this is going in the background. You see there, we can go back and we can keep working with the other clips okay. or keep doing and that's what we kind of, that's kind of cool too. I mean, it really has been, it's been replaced with that After Effects composition that as you work in After Effects, it's going to update back here in Premiere Pro. Yeah, it's telling me the exact same thing, that it's analyzing the frames here and what it's doing. And so I could actually see what's going on in After Effects, even though I'm in Premiere Pro. And there it is in your project there. It replaced it with an After Effects comp. Yep. It's in the timeline. All your original footage is still there. Now, let's just switch back to After Effects. And while it's doing that analysis, we could talk about the choices you got here. Okay. This is a really long clip. So right in here, I got 25 seconds. If I don't want to do 25 seconds, mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and shorten that up a little bit to about six. I'll just select that shot, and I'll do Alt, Right Bracket. And it actually shortens that clip, and it has fewer frames to analyze, so okay. it's going to go faster. Okay. It's only doing the frames. And if we need to, we can just go ahead and tell that to cancel, and we'll say analyze again, and it'll kick back in and only do the frames that are used. Right, and you can see that it's analyzing a lot less frames that time. Yeah, so the big thing here is typically, rarely are you going to use 30 second walking shots. So, sure. you know, edit the shots down to just what you want and then analyze but that But it part. does make a good point. I mean, this is not something that, say, if you're in a, you know, a news workflow and you have you know, five minutes to air time, this is probably not something that you're going to rely on you know, for, for... No, the solution in that case is to actually hire people who know how to shoot. <laughs> oh, you mean use tripods and stuff? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. novel, very novel idea. <laughs> yeah. Very novel idea. But, but it's pretty cool here. Notice it's almost done analyzing, and we've got two options here. One is, yep. is smooth motion or no motion. So no motion is lock it down, no movement whatsoever. It was on a tripod, you hit go, you let go of the tripod, it was locked off, okay. it rolled. Okay. That's fine. Uh, a lot so of you're times, saying that that will give you as much as possible a completely static shot? Oh, not as much as possible. It will just give you a completely static shot. However, if there's a lot of movement, it might have to blow the shot up a lot. Right, so you might get you know, a pixelated image, that kind of thing. Which is why I don't trust solutions that say they automatically stabilize your footage. Because mm. stabilization is really subjective. Sure. The more you stabilize, 
the more you have to blow up the footage. Right, and it can, it can look, besides just the framing aspect of it, you know, if the shot was, you know, if you're walking behind somebody, well, you, your mind thinks, well, hey, that's supposed to be a handheld shot or a steady cam shot or something yeah. like that, and no movement would right. just kind of seem weird, you know? Right, so usually in that case, you're going to go with smooth motion, yep. and when you choose that, you've got the option to sort of dial in the intensity of how smooth do we want it. Okay. So this is just about done. It's almost to the frames. You'll also notice besides that we have methods. And so position will just move it around mm -hmm. and that's going to give you black borders around the edge. Sometimes people want that. Like they don't want any blow up. Uh, maybe it was surveillance footage. They just want to stabilize it, but they don't want to throw away anything. Sure. Or maybe you just want to see how much you're stabilizing to show the client mm -hmm. the sort of the before and after. But usually people might say position, scale, rotation. And that's that's a common method that we're going to find in a lot of stabilization tools, position, scale, and rotation. So that's going to, if it needs to, blow up into the image a little bit. Rotate. Rotate it, and position it, wherever it needs to go. scale it up. To get rid of those black borders. And that is standard. We had that in earlier versions of After Effects. Yep. If you went through, you know, using different control points. The new one there is perspective, okay. which actually will rotate in 3D space to sort of stabilize. Okay. And then the last one is subspace warp which just sounds cool to begin with. And this is from Star Trek, like, you know, engage? Like, what is that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> okay. Yes. Damn the torpedoes. Right. So once you choose it, then it goes on to the next step, and it says that it's stabilized. So let's go back there to just position initially, okay. and we've got the smoothness amount here turned on at 50%, and we'll go ahead and invoke the preview here, and we'll just let that run. And, you know, in this case, we're doing full quality, and it's going to load in, actually it's at half quality, so it'll go pretty quick. And you see here as it plays, you know, that it did a lot of stabilization, about 50%. Yeah, it's not bad. It's still a little shaky, but not bad. Right. It's smoother. If you don't want to see what it's doing there, we can go ahead and just choose Stabilize Only. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, what you'll see is how much it's stabilized, but you'll see the black borders at the side. Oh, wow, that gives you a really uh, good idea of what it was doing as it was moving that image around, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times I'll just choose the stabilize only option so I could see, well, how much is it fixing it? And I go, oh. It's fixing it a lot. <laughs> it was a bad coffee day. <laughs> you know? So we can crank that up, and as we do, it's, you know, if we go all the way up here to say no motion, mm -hmm and we tell it to stabilize, you're going to see, you know, with that black box, how much it had to do. Yep, I see that. But we can now say, well, don't just stabilize. Go ahead and stabilize crop and auto scale. And under method here, we can also say, you know, do scale and rotation. Okay. So that looks pretty good. There we go. And you see there, we still have the black borders turned on. We could see how it's actually rotating, and there's a lot of fixing there to sort of preserve that horizon line. That's a crazy looking effect. I mean, you could use that just as a crazy looking effect if you wanted to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so if we say there, you'll also see you have the ability to synthesize edges, which can get a little tricky. Now, I'm going to go back to smooth motion here, okay. which is a little more realistic, and we'll take that down to about 70%. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use the perspective method, which is a little more advanced. Okay. Notice here that once you do that, once it's done that first analysis, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to reanalyze all over again. Right, because the first time around, it's literally just analyzing the motion and remembering that motion. And then from there on out, it's just using that as sort of a base to make adjustments. Yeah. So now we've done smooth motion. And if you look, you see it's actually doing a little bit of canting of the image there. Yeah, it's making me a little seasick. Yeah, <laughs> which is where sometimes that can go a little bit too far, which is why we'll take advantage of something like subspace warp. Okay. And I'm going to back this down a little bit, more towards about 40%. Okay. And we'll just click that button when it's done here. And it's going to be a little bit smoother. Now, this is a high motion shot. And so you see if you take it up too far, you know, you're definitely seeing that. And you notice there how that we're getting a little bit of a bend in the trees. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. So we got some high movement here and a lot of handheld. So you really probably are going to back that down or go to the advanced options. Oh, of course, advanced always gets you what you want. <laughs> exactly. So when you click that on, it's a detailed analysis and it's got to reanalyze all over again. But this has the ability to reduce rolling shutter which is going to really help with those strong vertical lines and the shaky movement. Now, could I use this if I just want to, instead of not just stabilizing things, could I use this effect just for, on itself for rolling shutter? If, you know, I had a fast whip pan or something like that? Yeah, yeah, you could just leave it on smooth motion at a low value and turn on the automatic reduction. 
okay. for it. You do want to go ahead and make sure that you've got that checkbox there for detailed analysis, mm -hmm. and that's going to do the higher quality. So okay. when you turn that on, it's going to click in. You've got the ability to sort of play with how it's been doing. And you see here, it does take substantially longer, yep. but it does work. It's going to go through, and it's going to fix that. So when this finishes off, we'll play it back in just a second. Okay, Rich. So the I see that the shot has finished up. You know, yep. doing again doing that detailed analysis does take some time. Yeah. So we flash forward, we time travel a little bit here in time <laughs> yeah. uh, to get to we where we subspace warped. We subspace warped to get to where it was done here. <laughs> yep. Um, so now you know, let's let's take a look at this clip and see what the uh, result was. Yeah. And the key here is, of course, that you could dial it in. So I've scaled back the smoothness a little bit. So it still has a little bit of shake in it, but nothing near severe as what it originally was. Yeah. And you notice that the straight lines are, you know, fairly staying straight. There was a lot of wobble in the shot. Yeah, well, this was yep. this was totally shot the hard way. Uh, but, you know, we can go ahead, you know, we got walking, we got panning, and we can crank that up as we need to. Uh, we can always also, you know, back and forth between perspective versus subspace warp. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny. I found myself, you know, I, this feature, the, the subspace warp is so cool that I've been using it all the time. But it really does depend on your footage, you know? Yeah. And you have to do a little bit of experimentation between these different methods uh, of stabiliz uh, stabilizing to get what matches your footage the best. In this case, I found perspective was a little bit better because we had so many strong vertical lines that yep. were distracting. That notice here, you know, it's getting more stable. There's a little less wobble, but yep. you can play with that. And it's very, very cool when you go back and forth. You know, the thing is to realize is that it's so simple. You know, so if we're back in Premiere and we got a different shot and we wanted to stabilize that, you know, let's just switch over here to a sequence. You know, maybe it's something like this. You know, it's just the, there it is, a right click. We'll just tell it to replace with a composition. Yep. You know, there it is and it syncs it. It's switched over, you know, comes in, saves our project, opens up, piece of cake. Yep. We'll go ahead and stabilize that shot. You know, let's make this a little bit shorter because it's about a, we'll just do four seconds here. There we go. And we can just cancel that and tell it to analyze. So it'll just do those frames. Mm -hmm. Clicks through nice and fast. You know, again, the more you run this on a clip, the faster it gets. That first analysis takes a little bit. Yep. But the key there is to play with the smooth versus no motion, yep. the subspace warp versus the perspective warp. Yep. Both of those do and a good job. And the detailed job. analysis as well. Now yeah. Click over to the project panel for one second. Sure. So one of the things I, I do think that people should know about this is that when you send uh, clips over to After Effects from Premiere Pro Timeline, yep. you're not going to create a new After Effects project every time you do that. Those Correct. Pro those, pro those, those actual clips are going to be into one existing After Effects project and new compositions will be created. And you actually think, well, I don't like that. I want different. Actually, this is a very, very good media management thing. Yeah. Instead of having to have, you know, you might send 20 clips over. Instead of having 20 different After Effects projects, you have that one main After Effects project for your uh, for your project yeah. with different compositions inside of it. You, know, you nailed it on the head because what you're then able to do here is you can run analysis and you know you get all the clips, it's fine, it's handing the media back and forth. That way you only have one project open. So while you're analyzing in the background, you can go back over and send the next clip over and start that. You can actually get multiple clips going and even if you start stacking them up, it slows down a little, but not as much because you got multiple processes. Totally. I was on a project the other day that uh, uh, illustrates that point exactly, is that I started out in the morning, I knew the night before I'd, I'd watch the show through with a client. And they just said, ah, can you stabilize that? Can you say And there was like six or seven clips, but there were longer clips. So when I got in the next morning, I just said, you know, send to After Effects, you know, create a new composition and let those things go. I went back to Premiere Pro and then banged out the rest of the notes that the client had on the piece yeah. while those pieces were analyzing. And, you know, and it was a great workflow. Yeah, it works just fine. And then if you have to do a media management, remember, you have to open up After Effects and run its Collect Files feature, and then run the Premiere Pro Media Manager, and those two projects with their media collected to one location can easily be removed. Correct. Now, let's just go ahead on this particular one. We'll tell this to do no motion, and uh, this is a little bit of a handheld shot as well, and we'll just run that, and you'll see here that it's gone through and you know, even though there's, there's still obviously a little side to side movement in the shot, but notice how she's staying locked down. It looks just more like a pan, totally. as opposed to if we just turn that off and we look at the original shot, you'll see that there was a lot more drift in that shot, a lot more shakiness oh, yeah, to especially it. Especially right there, yeah. That's yeah. very cool. And it's gone through, and it didn't get thrown by things like the actual hand wave. You know, it tracks multiple points. This isn't like one or two or three points. I've seen it, it could like actually track 
thousands of points. Very cool. So looks really good. Yeah, it does look great. So yeah, that's so a little bit more about the warp stabilization feature inside of the new version of After Effects. Again, uh, if you're not on After Effects CS 5.5, just remember you can always get a fully functioning trial. You can also try out the Adobe subscription service, that new subscription service, uh, to get the new version. And I think you know for particularly uh, difficult shots where you have a lot of shake and a lot of uh, motion in there, this is definitely definitely something to check out. Just keep in mind that it's an easy workflow. Send from Premiere or you know import directly into After Effects and apply this effect. Yep. Um, and just keep in mind, it does take a little bit of time, and it also takes a little bit of experimentation between the different methods and you know and that yeah. kind of stuff to get the right look to match a particular piece of footage. But it does work great. Yeah, yeah, great tool. Check it out. Again, thanks for joining us for the Creative Cow DSLR Essentials podcast. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where there's a DSLR forum. You can post your questions, search for answers, check out Creative Cow magazine, and there's a ton of back episodes of DSLR podcasts there as well. So, thanks again for coming. My name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. We'll see you next week.